Hi, I am Caitlin over here at Therapy Works, um, and I am joined today by one of our awesome PTAs, Mark Hurley. And uh, today, we're as we you know jump into fall, we're going to be talking about fall prevention. Um, sorry, trying to. <laughs> I know it's a it's a little cutesy, but gotta have some gotta have some fun with the topics. Um, so you know, just to honestly, even before we get the question to the like questions, Mark, do you want to just like kind of start us off with a bit of your background and like you know, your experience with, you know, people who need help with maybe fall prevention? Well, sure, absolutely. Um, I, I do have uh, quite a bit of experience working with um, the uh, older uh, patient uh, groups where falls can cause serious uh, injuries, you know, head injuries, fractured bones, that kind of thing. But so uh, finding a way to prevent that, you know, the, the started out the old saying, um, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And so having uh, things set up in place where you're, you know, not uh, prone to fall based on just happenstance or an accident. So kind of um, having your environment set up in a way, having your awareness and then just being physically prepared, all are good ways to prevent a possible accident from happening. Although it still can happen, you know, young adults, uh, middle age and older adults, gravity works on all of us. So, uh, <laughs> You know, we, we could be mindful of everything, and doing everything correctly, but of course the falls can still happen. So what we're hoping to do is uh, being prepared uh, for if that situation happens and then preventing a serious injury and then hopefully just, um, you know, learning from it and preventing it from happening in the future. You know? Awesome. Absolutely. And, you know, in physical therapy, people often think of us as like, you know, um, just dealing with pain, but we do deal with a lot of like functional issues as well. Um, and this is definitely one of those that we deal with, I think, a little bit more than um, some of the other functional ones, except maybe incontinence. We deal with that one a lot as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, um, you know, just kind of sorry to like <laughs> throw you a curveball right off the bat. Um, but like, you know, what um, could you like give us, you know, just a few things to start out with, like basic measures that people can take to help prevent falls? Well, sure. Um, again, going back to the age groups, first of all, if you're looking at the younger population and uh, some of it, it just comes from uh, like rushing, being um, too big of a hurry, being a little careless almost or sloppy. So a lot of that comes from missing a step. Uh, missing, I know that's happened to me, missing the last step on the stairs or a curb. Um, we've had some uh, patients in here from last winter that suffered falls from ice uh, or poor conditions on the ground, serious injury falls. And yeah, so we always see a lot of ice injuries. Yeah, oh, we had some, and, and there's some that are still recovering from those, you know, they may not be 100%. And, and of course, fall and then the winter coming around, uh, where we may see more of that as well. Um, so that's just one population being maybe possibly careless. And then the middle age and older groups, uh, you, you may just have, uh, as we age, you know, things may feel little less stable, may have a buckling of the knee going up or down the stairs, may have a, a, a reaction slower than what you had been when you were younger or when you were 18, 19. So you're not reacting as fast as you had been. And um, so a slower reaction time may lead to a fall. Uh, some of those also may occur with just um, instabilities that from the equilibrium as well. Slower response, slower reflexes, and possibly even some um, equilibrium issues inside your head could also be from um, medications that you may take in. Some side effects from medications are temporary dizziness or severe dizziness uh, or lightheadedness. Um, you may have physical conditions like um, sudden drop of blood pressure uh, or a bout of like pain that is a sharp shooting pain that temporarily debilitates you to where you have like a, you know, either a back spasm that may uh, change your balance, change your stance, uh, maybe a little twinge in the ankle or the knee that causes you to be a little unstable uh, laterally or even forward or backward. So um, kind of just, you know, uh, being aware of how your body's feeling. Uh, and then as we, as we continue to like work on those things, finding where there's the weakness in there and then uh, like what's the cause of our fall. And then we address that with therapy and preventions. And like you'd mentioned before, um, it doesn't have to be a painful, it could be something that you just learned from. And with us as therapists, uh, we're also educators. So instructing you on your environment and your own self-awareness, not only physically how you're feeling, but environmentally, like you're you know, avoiding trip hazards, um, using proper techniques, using a, a, a better way to do that same job that may be a little bit more dangerous before. You know, people have um, 
some careers based on like risk management. And so, mm -hmm. you know, not having to like look at every single detail in your daily environment or daily life, but um, you can really eliminate your fall risk by just doing a few measures that substantially eliminate that risk from possibly a 20% risk to a 5% risk. And you know, yeah. that maybe that's, that saves you hospital time. It saves you pain, recovery, finances. So even lowering that risk a little bit, um, you know, can pay off in several ways in the future. Absolutely. I mean, there are lots of great tips in, um, you know, in all of that, especially like, I really like the one about like medications, like, yeah, absolutely. Check those side effects, make sure that, you know, like as we're especially getting into seasons where there's, you know, lots of rain in the fall with lots of slips and leaves on the ground. And then we get into the ice season and there's, and then it's mud and there's like so many tripping hazards and falling hazards this time of year. So really taking that time to assess, you know, where your risks are, you know, how, how is your equilibrium? How is your body? Are you prepared to catch yourself if you do fall? Mm -hmm. do, do your medications have side effects? What is your environment like? You know, those are some really good starting points. So, um, and like, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, uh, to, to, to pigtail or dovetail off that uh, medication side effects as well, um, you know, physically as we age too, you, middle age or older, um, it's not a bad idea to get uh, both your vision checked, your hearing checked. Um, you know, if you have any oh, acute inflammation or any pain that's maybe that you want to be checked out, all of those things can, you know, influence the fall risk and, and reduce. It's really risk. hard to avoid hazards if you can't see them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. so, and one so, last one as well also ahead. is um, some people don't realize as well that uh, like proper footwear um, and, and also just the feeling of your feet um, as we get older as well too we lose some of that proprioception. We lose even that sensory input that we get from our toes, our heels, the midfoot, all that. So perhaps having the wrong footwear or just losing that sensation of the foot absolutely can contribute to falls too. Um, both the shuffling of your foot um, or just not being able to feel um, proper heel to toe step off. So those also can influence uh, falls as well. And so that's another thing to get looked at perhaps for peripheral neuropathy diabetes, uh, numbness or tingling, could be vascular issues as well. So. All right, lots of good things to keep an eye out for. So, you know, out of all of the things that you mentioned, you know, some of the easiest ways to prevent falls seems to be kind of like just simple adjustments to your living environment and making sure that, you know, you're kind of reducing the hazards around you. So, you know, especially if you're someone who has medication that might make you more unsteady or you're already more unsteady, what are some things, some changes that you can just make to your you know, to your home to make it more uh, fall safe? Well, it's, that's funny. Um, a lot of folks are sticklers to how their home is um, set up. So we have done this before we go in their homes and do a little assessment, the same way with an office space as well, if that needs to be adapted to, you know, ergonomically or fall prevention. So in people's homes, you could start with the basics, eliminate trip hazards, throw rugs, loose, uh, like if it's a uh, loose area rug on a hard surface linoleum or hardwood floor, um, cords, thresholds, pets. Also people forget <laughs> that. And I tell you, we see uh, people tripping over the pets, pet leashes, pet water on the floor, pet accidents. Those kind of things yeah. can cause falls. Yeah, I mean, my the, um, living room is covered in dog <laughs> toys right now. <laughs> dog toys. had a busy day. <laughs> uh, adequate lighting, adequate lighting in a, in a path, a reliable path. If lighting is poor or you're a little disorientated upon waking and you need to use the restroom at night, having um, proper lighting for your entry and, and exit into the bathroom or to your walkway from your bedroom to wherever you're going, um, or a safe path without furniture mm -hmm. to bump into. Um, and then just also just not taking things for granted like um, that. If you are one that's going to use environmental objects as your support, if you are a little unsteady, uh, older adults at night sometimes get a little wobbly at, or, you know, a combination of things can make them a little less steady. So uh, having a reliable, uh, like not a chair that's going to tip over, a chair that's going to roll away from you, um, don't, don't rely or expect that's going to be the same way every time. So kind of establish, like, like you had said, assess yourself. Uh, hey, how am I doing? Do I feel all right? Um, I'm sitting up. Check. I stand up, feel all right. So then you can proceed with the thing. So it's those times that we take it for granted, or it's that one time that you say, oh, before I knew it, I fell down, or I was just doing the same thing every time. And it was that one time I forgot, or one time I took it for granted, and, and then something may happen. So. Yeah, 
Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's just that like constant, constant awareness, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, and I was just kind of thinking about it as you were talking, you know, I like now compared to 20 years ago there, or even 10 years ago, there are so many easy fixes for a lot of those things. Like you have the rugs right now. It's really easy to, you know, go online and get like ways to stick them down and make it so that they're not catching your foot or, you know, lighting on the way to the bathroom. They're now like I saw, and this is what reminded me of it. I saw a couple of weeks ago, I was in an elderly person's home and they had um, lights like under their sink that are motion censored. So when they mm-hmm. go to the bathroom in the night, they turn on and they turn on on their feet to like illuminate those trip hazards. So, um, you know, things like that, especially as we're coming up for on, you know, the holidays, if you're, you know, a little uncomfortable with your environment or trying to look for ways to, you know, prevent falls, having, you know, those kinds of things on your wish list might be a good idea. It's never too early to start thinking about that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm I'm always in the Christmas mindset. What can I say? Uh, <laughs> well, and those are also just indoor environments and work environments, mm-hmm. but also don't forget um, as with seasons change, you know, um, you see the conditions uh, could be a pile of leaves or slick floor or um, ice on the outside or snow and those kind of things too. Even uh, that salty or the sand stuff they put down too can lead to slips and falls too. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, my next question was actually about outside, you know, how do you, you know, in environments where you have less control, how do you avoid trips and falls there? Well, obviously um, if you have a, a stair or steps, it's, there's no shame in using the rail. It's uh, you know, if you, if you need it it's there for your support, uh, so using the rails, it's there one or two, um, and of, of course, if uh, a lot of places will have the, if it's an office or a business, they'll have people clearing the snow and ice. But if it's not, I wouldn't, you know, try to be too brave. They will get cleared or will get iced or de-iced in time. Um, so you know, don't try to take too much of a high risk. I know you have to get into the door into the the workspace, but um, and and just like you had said, just assess like not only how are you feeling, uh, you know, is the wind gusting? Is the you know are you are you disorientated a bit? You know, how do you feel outside in this environment? So kind of no no different than inside. Just assess how you feel, take it slowly, and then once you feel like you're steady and fine, then continue on with your, your walking around the outside. Yeah, and I would like to add one more is like choosing well maintained places to walk, and I think that's especially relevant like in like downtown Lawrence, where you know you have um, a lot of streets that are really nicely paved and wonderfully kept up, and then you have lots of like streets that are brick. Yeah. And oh my goodness, I'm like I'm in my twenties, and I have to like just watch the sidewalk walking down those streets. So if I were even a little bit off balance, I can't imagine. Like those are. Those are definitely tricky. So like planning out your route to make sure that, you know, of course, sometimes you have to walk down places that are not as, you know, well-maintained, but like making sure that the majority of your walking path is somewhere that will be easier to to navigate is also Mm -hmm. a really great way to avoid some of those. And um, to continue on with some of the things that uh, as therapists that we provide, you know, uh, of course, now it sounds like we're just almost frightening everyone to be aware and super aware and super cautious. But, you know, as we continue to work with you, all of this will become second nature, but it could also be helping you with things that you may not have been aware of, like um, widening your stride uh, or widening your stance, uh, increasing or shortening your stride based on what uh, balance deficits you may or may not have. Um, and then like we talked about, you know, improving your, your heel to toe walk, your upright posture, um, and then stimulating some reactions or reflexes for uh, your writing reactions for um, if you do have a slight instability or near fall loss of balance, you can react the appropriate way. So all of these things are certain, certainly things that we do as we work with people to prevent falls, to recover from falls, and, um, and just to reduce the risk of future falls. Right, absolutely. And, you know, and I think that like, as we were talking about, you know, kind of being aware of your surroundings, it always kept coming back to, you know, always take account of where you are, and like how your body's feeling. But once you do that, realize that your body doesn't have to be feeling the way it is right now today. I mean, like, it it does have to be feeling like that this moment, but it doesn't have to feel that way tomorrow or next week or a month from now. And those are things that we can help you with. So if you're constantly, you know, feeling like you have to pay extra attention to your environment because you know you know that you're a little unsteady on your feet that is something that we help with and we help with all the time um and 
so I guess my next question to you, you know, I know that you guys as therapists do some like some strengthening with exercises with people who are, you know, less steady um, on their feet. Um, could you like tell us a little bit about some of those exercises that you do for uh, people who are high fall risks to help, you know, prepare them better and absolutely keep them um, from falling? Well, uh, first of all, it, um, you mentioned high fall risks. So usually those in that category are um, the older adults, uh, you know, weaker joints, less stable joints, weaker muscles, um, you know, all of those things that as we get older, they decrease our stability. So one example would be uh, the narrower support, narrower base of support. So imagine if your feet are about shoulder width apart, and as we get a little weaker, uh, that becomes a little narrower and narrower. And you may even see some start to like shuffle or scissor gate, you know, which is absolutely a good way to either catch your own heel or, uh, or trip yourself in other words. So um, we would work on like that type of uh, hip, um, a lot of hip abduction, uh, hip flexion as well. So, uh, oftentimes people will either take a shortened stride or not pick up their foot all the way off the floor. So you'll see a shuffle gate. And so with that, uh, and like knee raises, marches, um, you know, leg lifts, leg raises, um, and then uh, like standing hip planes, uh, a lot of exercise like that to improve the hip range motion and then in, uh, kind of uh, stimulate that widening of the stance and the activation of the proper lift for the, the hips to work when you're walking and prevent falls. Absolutely. And, you know, that is most common with older people, but like, I know that, I mean, just being around the clinic, I've definitely seen younger people who have gait problems as well. Um, you know, and, and it works for, it works for all of them. Cause like that's, it, it is a strength issue. You know, it's a strength issue. It's a flexibility issue. It's a practice issue. It's not a, you know, like having, you know, a shuffling stride is more common as you age, but that doesn't mean it has to be a fact of aging. Mm -hmm. You know, there, oh. there is something that can be done about it. There is Absolutely. help to be had. And, and I want all of our listeners to know that it's, I, I do not want to just put all this like into the certain category of that patient mm -hmm. category. Um, absolutely. Uh, we help young adults and young patients, teenagers as well. So um, some of that will come with that, uh, like the higher level balance, uh, like your writing reactions, reflex reactions, the how do you correct? How does your body instantaneously or um, react to something that uh, causes you to lose your balance? So some of that may be like some higher level stuff, some single leg stands, some really like fine detail balance reaction steps, ankle stability, uh, knee stability, um, you know, and using a lot of proprioception and that kind of stuff so that, you know, you can sense it both in your feet and your your muscles, how they're reacting and your visual stimuli and that kind of thing. So we work with young adults the same way as well, uh, just to, you know, to, it, it reduces the risk if you can prime yourself to react in the best way possible. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I'm, we're kind of nearing the end of our, our talk today. And, um, and so I... I know we've given you guys a lot of information on, you know, kind of preventative measures you can take, like having your, you know, eyes checked and um, environmental measures you can take, like um, clearing, you know, paths through your home, but also, you know, being aware of your outdoor environment. Um, and we've talked a bit about, you know, what kinds of things we do with our patients here at Therapy Works to help them gain better balance. Um, so, Mark, you know, if you have, if there's someone listening today who's feeling um, you know, like they are kind of unsteady on their feet. They're, you know, sometimes catching or maybe they're tripping more often than they feel like they should be. Um, which by the way, if you're tripping enough to notice that you're tripping, you're tripping more often than you should be. Um, so for people who are watching today, who are, you know, feeling, um, feeling like that, who are feeling like this might be kind of talking a little bit about them, you know, what, what should they do next? What's the next step? Well, uh, one, don't be afraid. Don't let fear prevent you from having fun and living your life. Uh, there's ways to solve that. Don't be afraid to fall. It's going to happen. I mean, it could happen to any of us. So don't be afraid of the outcome. But uh, do take it seriously because the, the possibilities of severe injury can happen. But um, I, I would just say just there's several things that we can do that you may not even be aware of that you either are doing wrong or that you've never thought of that can improve your current situation. So all ages, there's ways to help. Don't be, um, you know, feeling like uh, I can't do anything in my life because I'm afraid I'm going to fall and I can't have fun. So there's, we can help you with that. Uh, we can obviously 
you know, eliminate that fear, show you a new way of uh, accomplishing the, your task without that fear, and then um, just hopefully making it so that uh, falls are going to be something that's much more rare occurrence than what could be happening currently. Absolutely. You know, we don't want you worrying about tripping on your cat or thinking through <laughs> routes that you have to take outside or, you know, being concerned to go out when, you know, weather's a little slicker. So, you know, if you're, if you're kind of feeling like you in your life are pretty constantly or, or at least regularly thinking about falls and how to avoid them and you're, this is something that's concerning for you, um, go ahead and give us a call. We, um, our number is 785-749-1300. And we do offer complimentary consultations, which are a great opportunity for you to just sit down and talk for 10 to 15 minutes with someone on our uh, physical therapy staff um, and talk about, you know, what you're experiencing, um, you know, what, like, have, have you fallen? Are you just concerned about falling? How is it affecting your life? Um, you know, things like that. And um, and it's a hands-off consultation, but they're able to um, look at you and kind of give you a good idea of where to go next. You know, maybe it is something that we can help with and they can talk through like what kind of options we have for um, different things that might help. Um, maybe it's not something that we can help with. Maybe they really think that it's an eye problem and you need to go and see, you know, a an eye doctor, or maybe, you know, it's something that you need to talk to your primary care physician about, because it could be, um, you know, any other number of like internal things going on. But no matter what, they'll be able to point you in the right direction. And you'll know that you're, you know, taking steps towards, you know, avoiding falls and that you're, you know, getting closer and closer to that, like ideal picture of just not, not worrying about it, honestly. So, um, so if this is something that's on your mind, um, especially as we're heading into winter pretty soon here, uh, go ahead and give us a call. Again, our number is 785-749-1300, and uh, we'd love to talk to you. So, Mark, do you have anything else to add before we sign off? No, just happy fall. All right. Happy <laughs> fall and don't fall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining.